Hi guys, welcome back to After Effects for Beginners part two. Today, we're gonna be learning how to do our first TikTok style edit. These type of edits typically go on TikTok or Instagram Reels. Sometimes they're known as velocity edits, but I personally think that this type of style and velocity edits are two different things. That's why I'm calling it a TikTok style edit. Obviously, you don't have to be a beginner to watch this video. This is a good video because we're gonna be making it from scratch. But if you are a beginner, check out part one of this video so you can get familiar just with the setting and the layout with After Effects because now we're gonna be jumping right into things we should already be familiar with. So we're gonna do it from start to finish. So this video will be broken up into sections. We're at our composition. We should already be familiar with this. My composition settings for the width and height is 574 by 800. If you want different sizes, I'm gonna put them on the screen now. If you want a square, this is 1080 by 1080. If you want a landscape or I guess rectangle, that's gonna be 1920 by 1080, but I don't recommend that for TikTok. And if you want it to vertically fill up the screen on TikTok, this is 1080 by 1920. I'm going to do this format that I had originally. My frame rate is gonna be 30, but I, I don't really know. You can do 23.976, it just depends. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have your audio and your scenes collected. I have my song already, so I'm gonna drag it from my desktop onto into After Effects. So once I have my audio, I wanna mark the beats. I rarely mark beats, but lately I kinda have been because it's actually kinda useful. <laughs> We're gonna click on the audio that we downloaded and double click L. Once you do that, it's going to drop down these waveforms and pretty much where the waveform increases, that's most likely going to be your beat, but really just listen to it and figure out where the beat is. But like listen carefully because you don't want it to be off beat. Yeah. So there's two ways you can mark beats. You can use this symbol. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Or you can use this symbol right here, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I'm done marking my beats. As you can see, I have this little gap here. I'm just gonna add a voiceover scene, but I want my audio to fade out. So we're just gonna click L once and at your last beat. So in my case, this is the 12th beat. I'm going to press the stopwatch for audio levels to make my first keyframe. I'm gonna leave it at zero and I'm just gonna go over a few frames and make it between negative 50 and negative 30. And you guys can't hear it because I don't want to get copyright, but it's gonna it's gonna fade out. Hopefully, if you did it right, you can also make your audio fade in. But since mine's at the very start of the song, I don't need to do that. If you want to, all you have to do is just copy and paste your fade out keyframes, paste it at the beginning of where your audio starts. Right click the two keyframes and go to Keyframe Assistant and do Time Reverse Keyframes. Now it's gonna be from negative thirty to zero. Okay, so now that we're done with the audio, now we can start adding our clips. For TikTok, people love intros because they want to kind of like watch a bit of the show and it also gets them to go watch the show. That makes them more interested. So you want to have a really good scene and your scene should just be an intro that makes sense for the rest of the edit. That took me a while because I had to like go through each scene back. Basically with these beats that I have, I'm going to cut my scenes accordingly. So, so I'll do the first two beats with you so you can kind of like understand what you're doing and then you're on your own. So the first scene I have of them hugging for the first beat and then I'm going to go to the second beat and that's where I'm going to split the clip. And from there, I'm going to get a new scene right here. And this is going to be my second scene. And then now I'm going to do the rest. Okay, so now I'm going to be showing you how to slow down or do velocity for your clips. I want my clip to just be sped up a little bit in the beginning and then it slows down towards the middle. Some people will do it like fast in the beginning, slow in the middle, and then fast again. But for the type of edit I'm doing, it just it doesn't look the best to me for this type of edit. First, we're just going to look up Twixter and then add that to our clip. We want to change the FPS to the same frame rate as our original scene pack. So I'm going to click the two arrows here and then go to project. And then I'm going to look at the frame rate section and the original frame rate is 
30. So I'm gonna change this to 30. Then I'm gonna go all the way down to Smart Blend and I'm gonna turn that on. I'd like to turn the one below Smart Blend to a two. And then I'm gonna go to speed and I'm gonna keyframe this at between 200 and 250. I'm gonna go a few frames over a little bit before the middle. Keyframe it between 33 and 55. 33 is gonna be super slow. So that's your fair warning. So I'll make it 55. Then I'm gonna highlight these keyframes and easy ease them. And then for a graph, you can do a graph if you want to. I also like to keyframe the smart blend and motion blur. So now that we have all of our Twixter and slow motion or velocity, whatever you use, we're gonna get into actual effects. So I already have a video showing you different types of blurs to use on your edits. You can go watch that. I might actually remake that video. So for this edit, I wanna use BCC lens obs blur so you'll obviously need the bcc plugin to make sure your clip is pre-composed if you added any twixter just pre-compose it so now i'm gonna look at bcc lens blur obs then i'll add it to my clip first increase the gamma to 1000 and then for the iris scale i'll do 12. then click the stopwatch to make our first keyframe and then a trick i like to do instead of moving my time indicator all the way to the end of the clip i'll just push o and it automatically takes me to the end of my clip. Now make the iris scale zero and then highlight all my keyframes to easy ease. For the graph, I'm not making it too special. I'm just gonna move that stick down and then go a little bit over. Then I'm going to add exposure or brightness and contrast. They both do the same things and sometimes I'll use different ones depending on the edit, but today I'm gonna use exposure. I like to make my exposure 1.5 keyframe it, go to the end of your clip and then make it zero for your second keyframe. And I don't have a graph for this. Now I'm going to add opacity because I want it to darken towards the end. So click T on your keyboard, click the stopwatch for your first keyframe, leave it at 100, go to the end of your clip, and then change the opacity to zero. Highlight all your keyframes, easy ease, then I'm going to go to the graph editor and I make this stick up and then I'll make it kind of go over and then I'll bring the top stick over and make it go over the bottom stick. Just copy the graph. Okay. Now I kind of want to add some zoom. Usually I don't use zoom for this style, but I feel like it could work. I may take it out later. So push S on your keyboard and then your first keyframe is just going to be 100 and then go to the end of your clip and make it 110. Now we're going to highlight all of these keyframes, easy ease them, go to your graph. And for this graph, we're just going to make it kind of like a mid graph and make the first stick go up a little and then the second stick is going to go down a little. If you want the small little zoom to be faster, you just make the yellow stick longer and if you want it to be slower you make the yellow sticks shorter. I want to go back to the BCC effect we added and I'm also going to keyframe the gamma because I want to copy and paste the rest of this to my other clips so I don't have to do it over obviously but usually when I copy and paste it without keyframing the gamma it will not the gamma won't show up on the rest of the clips so now i'm going to just copy and paste this to the rest of my clips if you're facing the problem where your keyframes aren't reaching the end of some longer clips what you're going to do is highlight all your keyframes and then hold option while clicking your keyframes and then drag the keyframes over to the end this will expand the keyframes without messing up any of the graphs you did So you're gonna have to have magic bullet looks. For magic bullet looks, sometimes people don't have these two effects right here. So I'm gonna have a link in the description where you can download a preset with just these two effects in case your magic bullet looks doesn't have it. Um, I have a video on how to import presets already, so I'll link that as well. Anyways, for light flex, I have it at negative 850. So the first thing we're gonna add is spot exposure. And we're gonna mess with that so for spot exposure i'm gonna put it at one and then the center y i'm kind of just gonna move it towards the top i have it at negative 86.2 and then for the radius i'm gonna make that 2.0 as i just want it to be as big as it can be <laughs> and then for the aspect i'm just gonna move it i want it to be wide for the spread i'm gonna just move it a little bit up and keep the fall off where it is okay then i'm gonna add hue and saturation if you like a lot of hue 
If you want more colors to pop out, then you can do 125. I'm gonna do 120. And the last is, I'm gonna even try and pronounce this effect. So I'm gonna make the center X2 and the center Y negative 50. For the radius, I'll make it 1.5 and I'm actually gonna decrease it a little bit. And then for the aspect, it's gonna be 1.888. These are very specific because these are my own settings for my actual preset coloring. And then we'll turn the strength down to 55. And then that's all for here. Okay, and we're not done yet because we have some other things to do. Okay, so my microphone did not pick up on any audio for the last like two minutes. So now to redo this all over again. Um, Basically, after you get done with looks, we're gonna do some other effects. Let's add curves. For curves, we're just gonna go a little bit down and then click to add our point and move it towards this direction. I guess move it back a little bit. Then we're gonna add S underscore gradient. You need the Sapphire plugin. And pretty much we're just gonna make these little dots move to the side. And then for this 80, I'm gonna change it to 15. For the end X and Y over here, I'm gonna change that to around the 1000 area. Now for the combine, I'm gonna change it from grad only to screen. Oh, and change the brightness. I'll change the brightness to around 160. Alrighty, so now I'm going to add hue slash saturation. I like to make the master saturation three. And then we're going to add brightness and contrast. And I like to make the contrast 100. And the brightness is going to be 16. Now it's a bit too orange, so that's probably because of my point. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Then we're gonna add unsharp mask. I like to make the amount one and then the radius 200. The last thing I'm gonna add is sharpen and I'll make that between 40 and 60. Since I already have unsharp mask, I'll make it 40. If you get these little lines across your composition, just push S to enable scale and then make it 102. I already have a video on text effects. So if you need more of an explanation, you should go watch that. Hey guys. So I apologize for the, <laughs> sorry. Okay. It's the next two to three days after I filmed this video. When I did this portion of showing you the text, like my soul wasn't here or something. I really forgot to show you how to add the text because, because I forgot the target audience for this video is for beginners. So you may not even know how to add text, which is perfectly fine. It's on me. I let you down. So now I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> I would say a little more energy today because I don't know, things are just a bit slow. Like even my media encoder is slower than it was before. Anyways, you're not here for that. Okay, so how to import text. Let's do that. Basically, you're going to go to layer, new, and then Boom, text is literally right there. Okay, so then basically whenever your character talks, let's just say that Gamora is done talking here, then we're going to split it with Command Shift D. Double click the text to start typing. So we're gonna do example text and then, and then let's just say she's talking again here. Boom, split. I don't know what she's gonna say here. Um, let's just do my username, okay? So that's how it should line up when your characters are talking. Cool deal. Also, because people always ask, um, the font is Times New Roman, regular. Sometimes I use bold, but enjoy the rest of the video. So look up fade up words. This is gonna help us pop up the words on the screen as our character is talking. So pretty much all you have to do is just add the effect and then adjust the keyframes to make sure it matches your character talking. And then I'm gonna do that to the rest of my text so that it'll match. And then I'll check back in with you after. Okay, so I've done all my text and I'm gonna pre-compose all of them together. So the first thing I'll add is Deep Glow, which is also a plugin you're gonna need. I'm gonna make the radius in a little bit because I don't like my text to be too glowy. And then I'm gonna add Wave Warp. Let's make the wave width 600, adjust the wave speed to how much I want. The lower the number, the slower it's gonna be. So I usually do between 0 0.2 and 3. And then I'm gonna pre-compose again and add Drop Shadow because I find that if I add Drop Shadow on the same, I guess, layer of Deep Glow, it just doesn't make it just doesn't look right. So I always pre-compose. So I add Drop Shadow and I just make the distance 6. So now I'm gonna pre-compose my actual edit, not the text just the edit we made before because it still has the coloring effects on there. I have a panning video as well if you need more of an in-depth explanation. So look up wiggle 
and add wiggle position and wiggle rotation. I'm also gonna look up motion tile, which I should have done first. Add motion tile and make sure it's above both of the effects that we added. And I'm gonna make the output width and height 250 and make sure you enable mirror edges For wiggle position i keep the wiggle speed at one but i change the wiggle amount to 15. then i'm going to go to wiggle rotation and i just make the wiggle amount one and then the last thing i'm going to add is s flicker for the amplitude i just turn it down to like about there and that's all guys i say that's all like we haven't been working on this for a good minute i've been working on this for the last two hours because recording and editing is horrible for everything we've learned i have a um, pretty much a preset pack on my pay hip you can buy the coloring the panning the twixter everything like that all in one pack if you're interested if you want to watch the full edit it's on my tiktok you should go check it out i am now going to go eat dinner it's 6 p.m i'm supposed to be done with this by like 3.